What's up, guys? Welcome to the sesh. Today, I got a special guest. Alex, introduce yourself, man. What's up, guys? My name is Alex Velasco. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Fork to Fit Kitchen. How old are you? I'm 32. 32. And 32. I, would, I could say that uh, you are relatively successful. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> uh, define success. Well, you define it for me. Then. What, yeah. what does success mean I, to you? I think uh, we've progressed in our mission and what we're trying to do. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. That's how you, that's how you see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. It's not the Lambos. And the... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I will tell you this, uh, in oh. my older age at 41 right mm -hmm. now, uh, I view my life different than I would assume you do. And I'm yeah. going to ask you in a little bit how yeah. you view life as at your age. So from 41 to hopefully one day I get to live as old as my grandpa, which is 93, still alive, still does exercise, still active. Beautiful. If I am allowed to live that long, from 41 to 93 is not a very fucking long time. So I feel like I've wasted a lot of my life trying to catch up. And, and now I'm barely catching up and acquiring the skills that I need to become successful. Yeah. So what is it about a 33 year old that you got that earlier? Yeah. Like how, how did you get that? Actually, it's 32. I'm about to be 33 <laughs> <laughs> uh, this month, though. Okay. I mean, wait, July. Are we in July? Yeah, I get I get lost. <laughs> it's um, June. <laughs> yeah. So um, the I guess I see it in a way where I see it in a way where I don't think you've wasted that much time. Right. I think if anything, uh, you gained all this experience and knowledge to like, just start your life. Right. And I think 41 is super young. Yeah, I do too. Man. Uh, I think 32 is super young. Um, but there is a there is a mindset difference between a 33 or 32 year old and a 41 year old. So definitely, when I when I turned definitely. about 35, I was like, fuck, man, I, I got shit to do. Like, I got to do it fast. Yeah. And then I barely I sat on the couch for about three years listening to Les Brown motivational speeches mm -hmm. before I figured like, fuck, dude, I got to get up and actually do something because yeah. listening to this motivation is not enough. Yeah. So what was it about you? How did you get through that plateau? Yeah, uh, it's that spark of motivation, right? Um, I think it, it always starts with something like for me, it was a breakup and it was like uh, the typical breakup where you're like in love, you think you're in love. And then um, that was you, the fuel that pushed it. Well, well, it's, it wasn't that it just triggered like, hey, what am I doing? Not, hey, what am I doing wrong? I would say more of like, what can I do better? So I never feel like that again. OK. Right. And then I started analyzing my life and and realizing all that I hadn't done yet. And you have to kind of, once you see it that way, I think it, it sparks some type of motivation in, in the person. So like for me, it was like, okay, well, I'm gonna get fit. I've never worked out. I've never um, really tapped into the gym. I'm 21 years old. Um, so you've been lifting since you're 21? Right. Okay. Right. Um, so 21 years old, let me get into the gym. Let me get my my physical body better was that oh, to like to boost your confidence or was it what was it about it is that the breakup that you fueled that you're like you know what fuck this let me get into shape um no, no it was just seeing okay what do i find i guess successful at 21 right okay and what i defined successful was like um a grown-ass man who looks sharp like a chad what they say nowadays right um that has it all put together and kind of can make the moves that he he wants to make. Okay. And um, that was I, your goal. Yeah, I define that that man in my head, and that's the man that I I, I tried to be. So, going to the gym, uh, being super disciplined, uh, repetition after repetition, uh, learning how to eat clean, um, understanding nutrition, understanding uh, like. All those things, I guess, help my spark of motivation to 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 be where I'm at today. I got you. Okay. So, what is it about this discipline that people won't do? Because I I stumbled upon it when I was 40. Mm -hmm. uh, my trainer came in. We did a podcast with him, and at that time, I was weighing 250. This was about a year and three months ago. Wow. And yeah. he came on, and me and my partner were like, "Well, let's go see if he'll train us." And I was like, "Fuck that, dude! I'm too busy. I don't want to do anything." And then we jumped into it. And ever since then, I haven't missed a week of doing that. So it's just the hard grinding work that I got down to 186. 
and now I'm a bulking phase. So I learned a bunch of the process, but what is it about the discipline that most people won't do it? I think it's seeing progress. I think not many people fight enough to see progress and that's where they lose that motivation. Well, let's give them some realistic goals yeah. because if I, I knew it was going to take me six fucking months to yeah. start seeing results, yeah. Yeah. like that would have been like, okay, I'm going to throw these six months. Well, not throw them away. Learn the technique to be able to progress from the six months on. Right. Because that's really where all the, ha- the work happens. Yeah. So what can you help? Like, like give a realistic goal to somebody that's starting today or has started so they stop. Like stop complaining about just do it. Yeah, I would say give yourself, um, nobody likes a crash diet, right? And I don't like a crash diet because I think it takes a, it takes a while to break uh, bad habits, right? And a lot of people have bad habits in nutrition and, and not exercising and moving their body daily. Um, so I think it's creating those good habits, right? So, but I do, I do recommend seeing progression really fast. I think that's going to help you like the biggest stay, motivator. Yeah. Stay motivated and motivated and then, uh, discipline, right? Yeah. Uh, because that motivation is going to push you for so long, but so many people are going to see this progression happen and they're going to stay now disciplined instead of motivated. Okay. So, um, I think seeing progress as soon as possible is the best, um, way to trigger your mind. To, to stay disciplined in the gym. So, okay. So yeah. Yeah. And what do you? So f- I would say, I guess to answer your question, I would say like a good like give yourself a good ninety days. Ninety days. Right. And and really push those ninety days and try not to miss a day, and and really have at it. And yeah. and whether you get with a nutrition coach or uh, a a physical trainer, you should be doing the both though, like nutrition and physically. Give yourself 90 days. Once you break that, like I, I feel like you're going to have the discipline to keep going. No, I think you're absolutely right because I, I started counting calories and calories is such a tedious fucking thing to do. But I just got used to it eventually. And now I see what goes in my body. And I, I've been able to change diets along the way yep. just because I knew exactly what I was eating. So can you kind of touch on nutrition? Because that's kind of where you specialize, right? Yeah, well... Um I'll, I'll touch on nutrition, but um, I guess, like, uh, what would you like to know about nutrition? So the food, specifically mm-hmm. the food. Uh, and I've been, correct me if I'm wrong, if you want to lose weight, you eat less. Mm-hmm. Am I wrong? Well, yeah, the less energy consumption. The <laughs> So where's the healthy level here? So I guess yeah. what I'm trying to do is, like, if, if I were to say something on social media right now, right. if I say... If you want to lose weight, yeah. eat less. And then people get triggered because like, well, you can eat a lot and you can still lose weight. So yeah. what I guess I'm trying to say I, is how am I politically correct? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, we always have to kind of be careful with what we say nowadays. But, um, and, and I think that's a lack of confidence in today's society. Okay. And that's a huge issue for me. So that's what. Um, so we're, kind of dig into that. Explain, explain yeah. to that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go into that just uh after I answer your question, but I would say that the calories, your calories intake should be, um, based off of your body composition. And, um, let me just put it into simple terms. Like, um, if you weigh, let's just say you weigh 150 pounds, Mm -hmm. try to take in 150 grams of protein and, or, or I would even say, let's not even break it down into protein, carbs, and fats, but let's like break it down into a calorie. Like kind of, let's just say you're 150, a man, 150, you're trying to go, you're trying to gain about 30, 40 pounds of muscle, mm-hmm. um, or just you want to look physically fit and you want to gain, yeah, muscle. Um, start yourself off at, at a calorie. So I would say like maybe like 2,200 and do that for five days and see where, how much did you fluctuate in your weight? Did you go down? Did you go up? And, and then, uh, you kind of gauge it from there. So, oh, I'm going down in weight. So let me, um, have a calorie surplus 
it, which let me just add some more calories to my 2200 calories. Now I'm going to go 2500 calories in the next five days. See how my weight fluctuates. And they need to do and, that for like a, a while, right? Because sometimes it's the weight of the of the water, water weight, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Because everyone's different, and and scientifically, you can you can put an algorithm behind it, and you could say, oh, you you should be taking in 2100 calories. Yeah. But everyone's different. Your body reacts to differently to and every. And that's the hard part, dude. Yeah, that's yeah. that's why it's hard to stay disciplined. Yeah. Because even though you go to the gym every fucking week, yeah. you still have to do progressive overload to, to grow. Yeah. So you always lift heavier weight. You still mm -hmm. have to go. It's going to be harder. It's mm -hmm. going to be heavier. Mm -hmm. So I get why people get disillusioned. Yeah, it, it's it it's a uh, it pushes it pushes back. <laughs> yeah, but I will say that there's nothing better than a 41 year old man that has some muscle mass now because I can yeah. take care of myself. I feel physically fit. I feel able. Which yeah. is the important part, and I feel like a lot of men don't have that. Yeah, uh, do you, is that something you see? Yeah, um, I mean, it, it, yeah, I mean, uh, I could, I could tell when I've met you, uh, you're you're a pretty confident individual. Yeah, and I I'm only sure got that through that. R right. Oh, you got it through that. Right? Well, yeah, I was already confident in the beginning, but seeing yeah. now results that that signify, all right, actually what you're doing is working. It's like it's it's right. another thing like, all right, this works. Let me do more of it. Right. I feel physically fit. I feel great. I have energy. Right. Why wouldn't I do it more? Right. It's only beneficial for me. Yeah. So yeah. that's the way I'm seeing it now. Yeah, because people will, <laughs> you might be super confident mindset wise. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but the way people perceive you, you're kind of not as confident and mm -hmm. and you you want to show off what you're really made of in the inside right yeah. but you also know that um a book is always judged by its cover absolutely right um so i think that per you understand that perception wise people are going to perceive me they're they're not going to see the real me so how can i show them the real me so i can make that impression on that individual right right so exactly so now that you're physically fit and at a 40 at 41 years old not only do you have that mindset confidence but you have that 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 um that knowledge that people will perceive you as a confident individual right and is it th is that a bad thing um i mean I think it's a bad thing if you live in a society of people who aren't confident. Okay. Which is, there's a huge correlation between that because there's a big divide. Right. So I would say this is where the haters come in. Right. That's where your people start saying, hey, <laughs> haterade, <laughs> yeah. drinking the haterade. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, you're going to get haters for sure. But I would say of in course. business, it is 100 beneficial for any person to be physically fit, to be right. mentally sharp, right. to be fast, to be able to do things that most people can't. Yep. Am I wrong? No. I, no. I think a healthy body equals a healthy mind and vice versa. So. Cool, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I just always like to, to pick yeah. people's brains because I feel like they, anybody, I used to think that anybody be, could become an entrepreneur. And I used yeah. to feel that anybody can get a six pack abs. Yeah. It's just not the truth. It's it not. takes hard work and dedication and a long term consistent, it, it's literally consistency that will yeah. make you win the long term. Yeah. Can you kind of touch on that? Especially like Fork to Fit. Like, yeah. How many yeah. locations do you have? We have five locations. We're building out our sixth one right now. So you're pretty consistent. Uh, oh yeah, we're pretty consistent. So talk we, about that. Yeah, we opened up in, in 2018, um, our first store, and now we're at five stores. We're building out our sixth one, and we should have ten here in the Rio Grande Valley by the end of first quarter. That's pretty aggressive growth, man. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, I think it's necessary. Yeah. So yeah. So, so let's touch on that then, because yeah. I I ran into an article last year. Uh, Jesse James West video was uh, we live in the fattest city in the nation. Yeah. So the United States, McAllen, Texas, yeah. and surrounding cities is the most obese in the <laughs> nation. Uh. Yeah, I mean, you could look at it egoly, right, and say, like, I, I'm saying ego-wise, and, and you can say, well, that's not, uh, that's pretty shameful, right? <laughs> but you can also look at it as a, um, as a kind of uh, opportunity to, to kind of revolutionize the way people eat here in the Valley. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, Fork to Fit's doing. That's what we're, we're really about, what we're really trying to push. Um, 
And that's why we're pre being pretty aggressive here in the Rio Grande Valley, because we want to prove ourselves that we can change that. And as soon as we prove that, I think people will understand that we have uh, great knowledge in what we're trying to do uh, with our business concept and what, what we're really trying to do for the nation. But yeah. uh, we got to start here in the Rio Grande Valley. I mean, I was born and raised here and we were known as the fattest, the, the fattest city in America, the, the most obese city in America. So you know um, about that statistic for a while because oh, yeah, it's yeah, the first I mean, time I heard it like two years ago. No, I heard that statistic back in 2015. Wow. Um, and uh, that's when I was personal training uh, pretty heavily. Um, I had quite a bit of clients and I kind of got to understand their mindset and um, their daily livelihoods and and understand how I could try to change that. Um, I was, I mean, I, I was personal training. I was making great money, um, going to college. I was uh, a server at Cheddar's um, and I was personal training, but I always felt like, okay, there, I, I can go um, finish my biology degree um, and go to dental school and change teeth, or I can continue doing what I love, which is personal training and kind of uh, molding individuals to, to greater confident individuals. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I kind of understood that, I, or I kind of said, what could I do to change more people's lives in a bigger Light, right? Had you always been that way? I've always been that way. So you've been service based. Oh, always. always. Where did you get that from? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've, I, I think it's my parents. I mean, it's in my DNA for sure. Um, my, my grandpa was a great entrepreneur. Um, and, um, and, and, and I say a great entrepreneur because the guy worked till he was 93 when we had to take wow. away his license. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, he died at 99, but uh, I saw that man work every single day uh, till the day he couldn't anymore. Yeah. Um, and that was amazing to me. So is, is that a bad thing that, that people no. focus so much on work? Because I want to ask you about like uh, like life work balance. Mm -hmm. Like how, how does that look in your life? Because I feel for every entrepreneur like that does not exist like your business is your baby and it's, you have to, you have yeah, to, you yeah. have to manage it all the time. Yeah. I'm, um, work life balance. Every time I hear that, I'm kind of just rebounds off my brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't exist. And no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I figured man, because like I, I, I get a lot of heat sometimes because I work a lot, but I'm trying to grow something that's, that's bigger than myself. Cause I found now that I have a purpose. Like yeah. I, I have yeah. a goal in mind and I feel like, like Parkinson's law, I always talk about this. If you give a date to a, a project, a goal and you hit it, that's mm -hmm. Parkinson's law. It will happen within that a lot of time. Yeah. And I, I live my life that way by making these goals and I have goals till I'm a hundred years old. So I don't think I'll die till I'm a hundred until I finish these goals. That's the way I kind of see life is like you have these plans, you're going to hit them and you're going to hit them until you stop until you stop making goals. And I feel like a lot of people won't make goals. What is it about that? Why won't they make goals? Is it stupid? Do um, they think it's foo-foo? I, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, they might think it's foo-foo, right? <laughs> I love that word, man. Foo-foo. <laughs> uh, -foo. Um, so I do, I do think that, like for me, I mean, I, I started off with a motivation and, and, some motivation and then I created goals for myself and then I found my purpose and and that was like serving right serving uh others like mm, before me um but, how did how did you come to that um what was it that triggered you was it a series I, of things I, I think it was I, I think it's always been just a a constant thought in my my head. I didn't do well in school. Um, I always wanted to do like, I wanted to be, I wanted to help. I wanted to, um, I guess I wanted to just really see what impact 
I could make in the world and how. And um, just sitting in school, that's all I ever thought about. I was like, how, how am I going to do this? But it, it was always in a positive manner, right? Uh, because my, my parents are such good people. They're still married to this day. Um, they showed me all love and, and um, caring for others that are just strangers. So I think that's kind of what... I, I guess you. you know spark that yeah um so um i've always just thought like that so i didn't do too well in school i was always thinking about different things um but i did go to college just to 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 give that degree to my parents right I got um, you. um and and yeah but um well, I feel like entrepreneurship is one of the hardest things that anybody will ever do because I find myself sitting in this office alone a lot mm -hmm. thinking working mm -hmm. and doing the tedious things that i have to do over and over and over and over mm -hmm. again that people won't do right so i, I feel like 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 well, your go goals right like yeah. like you're saying like why don't people yeah why won't people write their goals down and then say i'm gonna do this yeah yeah so going back to your question i mean i always want to emphasize on like my past so you can under understand my mindset a little bit more right okay. uh, but to, I guess to set goals, um, like for me, like I said, um, was okay. Let me make these little goals, and then and, and then it's just finding your purpose. But uh, for for I guess viewers out there that that want to hear some type of like what's gonna help me complete a goal, what's going going to um, it's just motivation. <laughs> like honestly, at the but end one, of the day, one time motivation will run out. Yeah. What was that? One time motivation will run out. Like you can only have enough motivation. So there, there has to be that something that triggers you like, all right, let me jump and fucking do it. Yeah. So like, what is it for you? Like, why are you so aggressive at growing your business? <laughs> it, it, it may sound redundant, but uh, it's really uh, figuring out what you're wanting to do with your life like what what is your purpose here on this life like what i mean everyone just wants to live the ordinary life uh, most people do right so you're not it, satisfied I, i'm just not satisfied okay. with with uh just living in mm, an ordinary life I, and there's nothing I, that I, I wouldn't say I, I guess the majority of how people live. Right. Right. Yeah. Which um, isn't a bad thing. And I don't want to say ordinary because I'm not judging whatsoever. Yeah. But um, what I want to to make clear is just like, I think it's it's either you're going to live a, I, I think actually, I mean, you can live an, an extraordinary, or, extra no <laughs> ordinary life. Yeah. Right. Um, and you can just find a new uh, purpose in this world like what is it that you're trying to do i mean I, I think just why we're here is 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 to serve people and to be there for one another yeah. right and um um leave your legacy and make an impact in the world in a positive way yeah. right um so so what are you going to do to help that 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 happen right for you in this life um, and if you never find that, I feel, I feel terribly sad for you because it's like you, you didn't live the potential you were supposed to yeah, you could have on, lived, yeah. in this life. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, that's what sparks my motivation every single day. Um, yeah, I want to revolutionize the way people eat, but I want to do so much more here. Yeah. Like I want to do so much more than just like revolutionize the way people eat throughout the nation and the world. So it's, it's, um, so you can hear behind my words that there's a lot of motivation. Exactly. Yeah. Right? So you have a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I would, I would venture to say that most people don't have a purpose and it's very hard to find that, especially yeah. Yeah. when you're, you're going through hard times and every single, every single day, like for example, uh, 10 to 12 million businesses will close this year in the United States. It's a staggering yeah. number. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I always talk about marketing. Marketing is one of my specialties in advertising. And you just recently moved your team to a new location, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, our marketing team. So talk about that because I find that fascinating. You don't, you no longer have them in house at the at the Fork to Fit locations. You have a actual location for your marketing team. So you obviously Correct. have yeah. to assume. I have to assume that marketing to you is one of the most important things for your brand. 
Yeah, yeah. I so think, touch on that. Yeah, yeah. So um, we have our yeah. We just recently moved our marketing office um, to to a a bank tower, so that way uh, everybody can have an awesome view <laughs> because that's really cool to to walk into the office and have an awesome view, right? Um, so um, I have a marketing team of five people, um, and. I think marketing is huge for any business. I think marketing is what made Fort to Fit what it is today, um, and it helped it helped us um, continue our mission. But I think marketing is huge for for any business, and I, I do see here in the valley that a lot of people don't understand that um, that you you have to share your story, you have to share your business, you have to share what you're trying to do for the people here. Um, so with with that being said, marketing is is what's going to change your, I mean, what's going to share your story and what you're trying to do as a business, whether it's uh, cleaning windows or, and for every, so that everybody can never look at a window that's dirty again. Right. Like, okay, well, how, how can you showcase that to somebody, um, letting them know, like, you'll never have a dirty window again? Well, you have to create some type of marketing content so that way people can understand what you're doing so they uh, understand it clearly and then they want to purchase that service from you. So, yeah. so kind of like yeah. dive into what you all are doing. Like, like give us examples. Like what could a business do right now, a business owner, let's just say any industry, yeah. what could they do on social media? Like this is the strategy you can implement today to get new customers in the door. Yeah, um, I think it's um, put put your your service and your purpose on what you're trying to do for customers through uh, social media and um, social media is I think every we live in a in a very physical realm right now but I do think digital realm is is coming right with AI and and all technology that's advancing pretty quickly um, I think you have to be known digitally and and that's um, I think what you could do to 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 spark that type of uh, more more purchases of your service, um, I think um, posting content on social media every day. I mean, just like Fort to Fit, we did we did it from the start in 2018. I knew that everyone was going digital uh, eventually, and I said, "How can I get my brand in front of many eyes?" Uh, with as little dollar as possible yeah. and that was like social media and Instagram and I knew everybody was like get on Facebook spend money on Facebook 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 yeah. and I'm like and you guys don't <laughs> see the future yeah uh, <laughs> and I mean well <laughs> I would say that because I'm just like why is everyone telling me to do something that I'm not gonna do <laughs> first and foremost I'm gonna I'm gonna go and advertise on on Instagram and I'm going to grow my brand on Instagram because I know everybody on Instagram, um, were the younger crowd, right? And eventually the older crowd will follow the young crowd. Absolutely. And so you say, okay, well, am I spending time on Facebook or Instagram? Duh. Yeah. Instagram. Right. So let me go and attack Instagram with all of my content all of my branding, what we're trying to do for people and let, let them know who I am or who, who the brand is. Right. right. Um, so I, I, I put a lot of content on Instagram. I would do it myself, uh, when we first started and I would get people to share our stories on Instagram and have those people share stories and give a free coffee. If you come in, um, this day, like to have a huge marketing push, mm -hmm. it was all Instagram. And, um, I spent like maybe like $200 a month, Damn. like at, at most because no one was doing Instagram advertising in 2018 here. Yeah. I mean, they were, but it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't, it was so easy to get in front of people's yeah, eyes so many people, with, man. <laughs> with, with so little dollar back then. Yeah. Um, it was well, in 2018, five years ago. Um, so 
so we did that and that's how we became a, a thing and and people loved fork to fit and and the products and the packaging the perception that people experience when they touch our product when they smell our product when they eat our product um that's all marketing right yeah and and absolutely so yeah i think every company should have a dedicated marketing team or work with somebody who who does um, marketing for you and can help share your story better and to 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 more eyes for as little dollar as possible let's dive into yeah. the the uh, actual team so I, I would feel like a business owner just thinks of marketing and it's just one thing the post that goes on mm -hmm. so kind of touch on what your team does like who are the people there what do they do so they can kind of get an overall picture like it's just not one thing that's going out yeah like there's strategy there's content behind it there's people that are taking pictures video yeah. kind of touch on that yeah i mean well like well, who do you have right now on your content team yeah so um i think that I guess to answer your question, I have Christian, who's a photographer. He was one of my Shakeologists when I first started Fork to Fit. Uh, we called all the barback people Shakeologists, okay. like Starbucks has barista. Um, we called them Shakeologists because they would be making a bunch of shakes eventually. We knew that that was going to happen, and now we sell a bunch of shakes. Um, and Christian was one of my Shakeologists, moved his way up to... Uh, marketing because i saw the kid drawing every i shouldn't say the kid he's my he's like my brother dude he, <laughs> I, I trained this guy when he was 15 years old wow um and when i was personal training and i'm 25 at that so at that time. time yeah yeah i've known him yeah yeah for quite a while but he was always drawing in the bar back like drawing some just stuff and i was like this guy has a creative mind yeah. uh and he needs to be in design or marketing. So let me throw him in there. Um, and he's now our photographer and he's become really, 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 really good at it. Nice. I'm super impressed. Um, hard worker, curious mind, uh, keeps learning. I have Alyssa Luna, who is my marketing director. Um, she actually interviewed me for a UTRGV uh, class, a marketing class. Oh, nice. And uh, she sparked attention for me. So I, reached out to her and I said, she has a go-getter mind. I like her style. Let me get her in here. And she's helped. She was actually like my right hand man, uh, woman. Um, when I was doing social media marketing on Instagram and now she, she understands my mindset completely and the vision that we have for fork. I make it transparent, very clear to everybody always. Um, and, um, she now leads the team of marketing, um, uh, for individuals. Um, and we have others like Andy, um, uh, who is amazing at design work. So she does like a bunch of, uh, putting things together, right? Mm -hmm. Like photography, uh, she pieces all fonts. the stuff together. I yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Pieces it, everything together and, and puts it, um, uh, ready to go so that way we have your content ready yeah we yeah. have we have a social media manager as well yeah. um we have those those type of people in the marketing team so there's photography videography there's uh putting content together there's the social media part yeah. yeah the fulfillment part social yeah. media management like um and then we have the that whole marketing team working on community events like creating uh, we're, we're now teaming up with one of uh, a yoga house here mm -hmm. um, and we're going to be doing like a, a fort to fit event. And what we're trying to do with that is um, have events for the community and kind of help them with motivation. Mm -hmm. Right. And it goes along with your goals. Right. So yeah. so that's what we're trying to spark now. Yeah. Um, so. There's so much that goes into marketing. That's just like maybe the tip, yeah. 20%. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's crazy, like if, if that, right? Yeah. But there's just so much more, right? And there's like, let's look at packaging. How can we make it prettier? Uh, let's look at design inside the store. How can we make that better? Like, how can we make the experience better, more fulfilling to the customer when they walk into a store, uh, their comfortability, like all of that, right? Yeah. So design, um, uh, 
posters, informative posters, um, all the design work you see inside a Fort to Fit kitchen store. Like yeah. you just, uh, there's design work on the TVs, um, ads, um, ads meaning like uh, what's coming up uh, to Fort to Fit or or what do we have on promo now? Yeah, uh, things like that. There's there's a lot of things to manage. So much. So so let me ask you this: yeah. How do you, as 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 the leader, mm -hmm. how do you manage those expectations? Well, I think early on you kind of have to understand that not everybody is going to do it how you envision in your head, right? And you can have those expectations and do it yourself forever and never get anywhere. So you have to kind of drop your expert expectations. Um, well, even your have, ego at the same time, right? Because yeah. I'm assuming you as a man, fit mm -hmm. as fuck, mm -hmm. are very confident in the, way, <laughs> in the way you do things. So you're obviously, you have done stuff yeah. that got you successful. So mm -hmm. you, you give the baton to the next person, like, fuck, they're not doing it. Like, what, what did you have to change in your mindset to be able to let that ego go? Yeah, um, I think that that's something that a lot of people have in business, and that's why they fail, is their, their ego. Um, and um, I think as soon as you drop that ego, um, you have to have some ego, right? Absolutely. You have to have some ego, um, but you need to drop it with your team members you still have to have it, but you have to drop it with your team members and your expectations and like letting up, understanding that that human being is not gonna understand your mind. Mm -hmm. Like, so you have to make it transparent. You have to, you have to communicate that to them. Um, so it's on you at the end of the day. Like you're just hurting your own ego because you're the guy, yeah. <laughs> you're the guy not communicating the vision. Right. Right. So, so, if they're not doing something to like my expectations, it's because of me. It's because I'm not communicating to them what I envision in my head. And I feel like a lot of people don't really understand that because I had to really understand that there's a lot of people out there that are way fucking better than me that can do my job way better. Mm -hmm. But what I like to do is I focus on the growth of the business. Yeah. And that's pretty much the same boat you were in, correct? Yeah. Yeah, and, and I feel like that's a different position than, than what people are used to because there's different levels even in, in entrepreneurship. It's like we're overseeing a team. Well, now you need leadership skills. You need to be able to communicate well. You need to be able to manage expectations. Like all these other things that you hit at a different level. Yeah. And most people just are like, I don't know what the fuck to do. So they just stay stuck. Yeah. And that's where I find the power of mentors to be very important for me is like, I, I consume so much content now on business growth and all this stuff uh, from Alex Hormozzi and all these people that, that I aspire to. And their, their number one thing is leadership. Like you have yeah. to have the culture of the group that you're going to be with. Because if I hire on people, I want people to think like me, to have the same goals as me. So I think managing those expectations are, are the perfect way to start that business growth on the right foot. 100%. And you can even do it with a very small team, yeah. especially with AI now. Have you messed around with it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm very big on AI. Um, I, I love, uh, all that it, it can help people do or humanity do. Um, there is that a little bit of like scarcity, right? <laughs> like where yeah. like, you're like kind of, uh, but, but if, overall, I think if it's managed well, if humans manage it well, I think it's going to do a lot of good for, for humanity and also, uh, for our future. Yeah. Um, it opens up our imagination a little bit more. Absolutely does. And it, and it 10 X is your productivity, man. It's just 100%, insane. Like, yeah. I feel like a lot of people, when I talk about that, they're like, well, I don't get it. And, mm -hmm. and I even made a, a guide on how to use chat GPT with prompts and, and right. I'm pushing it. I'm pushing it. And I feel yeah. like I always am too preachy. Like when I lost a lot of weight, I felt fucking great. So mm -hmm. I wanted to preach it to everybody and nobody likes that shit. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. I was like, you know what? Let me try a different way. So I came from an educational and informational type of thing because yeah. I'm not entertaining at all. So I have to educate people. You're pretty entertaining. You're well, keeping me entertained. Well, thank you. I, I just <laughs> keep the conversation going. But I feel like, like AI is one of those things that like, fuck, dude, if you don't jump on it, your competition is going to use it. and going to blow you out of the water. Yeah. Yeah. Is that how you see this stuff too? Um, 
Yeah, I try not to look at competition or think about competition. Um, but I think that AI can help a business business excel or your vision excel uh, faster um, by helping communicate your vision on on paper, transcribing it. Um, I think AI does a good job in, in doing that. Like for me, um, for me to put a sentence together is really hard. Same like, here, man. I'm uh, the same fucking boat as you, bro. Like, <laughs> I know what's in here, but I don't know how to put it correctly on. Well, even to speak it in this <laughs> mic right now, right? But um, I know that AI can help me make that clear. Um, so give it a prompt and let it know your mind in jibber jabber right yeah. like you, you can misspell words you can misspell <laughs> words you can put words that are not supposed to be there yeah and it can understand what you're trying to say a lot of people and, think that's cheating i feel like it's a tool that you're using to be able to pr productivity is for one but that's just ego man right yeah. oh you're cheating drop the ego yeah like somebody's gonna use it yeah like <laughs> like oh you can't write a sentence on your own? No. Yeah. I want it to write a sentence for me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, what's I'm, wrong with that? <laughs> dude, I'm one of the worst spellers because I'll leave out, like, words on my fucking post and I'll go back after people have commented and I'm like, fuck, dude, I'm such yeah. an idiot. Yeah. But I find that... It, that it, it's not going to make people stupid. Right. Like, it's not going to make you stupid. If anything, it's going to make you more knowledgeable because it's going to give you more information. Oh, dude, the research capabilities on that thing. I'm, yeah. I'm, I started ChatGPT in January 14th and I consumed it for three months for two to three hours every single day just so yeah. i can learn it yeah. and now it's just a part of my morning routine the daily routine like, I, I used it last night at 2 a.m writing yeah. an email it's crazy yeah like i don't think people really i actually drafted this. up my 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 new operations guide for uh the new concept we're about to launch in our sixth See, location that's amazing man because yeah. i don't i don't think people really understand the power of this but mm -hmm. there's also a learning curve because the yeah. prompts are what make it work yeah. yeah so think about that right i was able to draft off draft up a whole operations guide for a new concept in our business in less than two hours in detail and yeah. specifics like it's mind-blowing man. um and i did it in less than two hours so i was able to communicate what i envisioned for that concept on paper and i shot it in an email at 2 a.m to my director of operations nick and He's probably reading it this morning saying, what does this nerd fucking want? Right. <laughs> yeah. But Nick's a nerd too. Like, <laughs> dude, we're, we have such a good relationship. Um, uh, man, our work relationship is so amazing, but, um, the guy can, I mean, I can call him or text him at 2 AM uh, and he'll answer. And it might be a stupid thought like, Hey, <laughs> what do you think about this? Or like, Hey, this and that. And, and he'll, he'll counter or not counter, but like uh, have a response for me. Um, but, um, it's awesome. Anyways, it, going back to AI, I think it's a good, useful tool. Um, I have my marketing team using AI. I, as soon as, um, I knew about AI. I started exploring it, and in November, tw November seventeen, two thousand twenty-one, was it when ChatGPT released? Its One first? of the first versions. Yeah, it was yeah. early on. As soon as I think, or two, two, was it this year? No, it was, no, it was last year. It yeah, was last, it was last year. year. Okay, so in November they released it. I said the world, ha the world has literally changed. Yeah, and I said that loud and clear so everyone could understand what about to happen and no one really understood that <laughs> so i said okay well i'm gonna they keep, still don't I, i'm gonna keep using this and i'm gonna keep moving forward really fast and we have a whole i mean we have a we have a whole 10 to 20 year vision ready to go that's like, awesome man yeah so just for the business owners that are listening since that's my my primary audience like how are you using chat gpt I uh, use it for emails. I use it to draft up operations, to draft up guidelines, to draft up policies. Um, a lot of HR stuff, um, a lot of um, um, creative stuff, like um, things I'm curious about. I, I learn about it really quickly with ChatGPT, really, really quickly. Yeah. It's scary quickly, um, which is why I can't put a fucking 
sentence together <laughs> because that, I, sorry, I didn't know if I could curse. No, absolutely, my bad. I've been cussing the whole time. <laughs> okay. Um, I can't put a sentence together because I have so much data in my brain. Yeah, that thought I, leaves too damn fast, man. It's just, uh, anyway, so um, I use it for a lot of things as a businessman and it's helping my business excel in many many ways and, and i would also say yeah. that it helps with managing the expectations of your, of your yeah crew. exactly because the communication's there now the it's clearer it's more transparent um it's uh but yeah i think any businessman that's listening i think uh drop the fucking ego and start talking to your team um like you would want to be talked to they don't know what's in your brain so um understand that you need it, it's on you if they don't if they don't meet your expectations yeah well, cool man yeah so before we finish off the podcast give a piece of advice that you have learned within your 33 years 32 and a half mm -hmm. uh with business and then in life like what is this one thing like you're at the end of your life what do you want to leave behind what is that saying that can help somebody Um, find a way to serve many people in a positive manner and life will mold as you foresee it. So you are, are interested in the power of words. The power of words have the power to change your life. Mm -hmm. I 100% I believe in that. Do you? Yeah. 100%. All right, guys. We'll see you next time on the session. Later. Thank you.